Hello friends, this is Durga from IT University. As part of CCS Spark and Hadoop developer, in this video I will be talking about end-to-end -end flow of integrating real-time or near real-time streaming data into HDFS using Flume. So far we have uh, seen uh, the Flume introduction and then we have seen uh, uh, yeah, how to actually run a simple uh, Flume job which will actually read data from uh, uh, Telnet um, after running a web server and then dump into the logger um, to display whatever is typed in uh, telnet and then we have also seen how we can actually use the hdfs as a sync in the logger so that uh, whatever we typed in telnet is actually uh, pushed into uh, hdfs in this video i will try to use more uh, 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 real world scenario than uh, uh, using telnet and in, uh, uh, testing out flume end-to-end uh, -end flow so for, for that first you need to understand what is available on the cloudera vm so for that you need to start the cloudera vm <coughs> so i'm starting the cloudera vm it will take a while so the vm is started <coughs> now you can actually see what is available um, as part of the uh, VM. Uh, Flume is already installed and we have tested it already. On top of that, they actually provide you some Flume examples under CD OPT examples Flume. And here you can see, you can go to conf ls minus ltr and uh, you can see both flume and env.sh flumenv.sh uh, have memory related se settings and uh, then you can also view flume.conf so what uh, it is doing is it, it it has a source a sync and channel and the sync is solar uh, sync so the data will be pushed to solar uh, on this uh, vm if you use this uh, uh, conf file uh, to start the agent with name agent1 and the source is of type exec uh, sync is of type solar you can scroll down to check the uh, sync type uh, where is it type yeah here you can see that uh, sync is of type uh, uh, solar this is the full uh, fully classified uh, class name and then channel is file so earlier we have seen a memory channel and in this case we are actually seeing a channel of type file so uh, here what will happen is uh, whatever uh, uh, is uh, is read from the logs it will be buffered into a file before dumping into the sink so we will use uh, uh, the source uh, as exec and the channel as file but sync we will use hdfs because that's what they want as part of the certification curriculum so the type is of type exec and uh, which means that you can run some linux command or unix command and you can uh, get the results to be uh, streamed through flume into the channel and the sync and here when you say exec you have to give the command and we are actually uh, giving a command called tail minus f tail is a linux command minus f uh, minus capital f what it will do is for example i am opening another terminal okay and uh, if you go to any where log ls minus ltr and say tail minus f messages for example okay uh, okay i will do sudo tail minus f messages and hit enter now you can see that uh, it is uh, tail means uh, the last few lines uh, i think by default it displays 10 lines minus f means uh, to refresh last 10 lines as um, as soon as uh, a new entries are made into the uh, 
made into this messages file. Messages is again a Linux uh, related file. Uh, when you make uh, when you run uh, some services, uh, messages will be updated. You don't need to worry about what messages is. The main thing is I am trying to explain what tail minus f does. And uh, let me do one thing to show you what will happen. I am actually starting and uh, stopping a service, or I am restarting a service. Sudo. Uh, I have MySQL database on this, so I will just. Uh, uh, restart the MySQL database. Service MySQL D restart and hit enter. And it will make certain entries into messages. Let's see whether it will be updating messages or not. Okay, it haven't updated messages. Okay, let me do this. Let me say sudo service uh, ntpd restart. Yeah, now when I say sudo service ntpd restart, it actually refreshes the messages. So uh, there are certain um, uh, Linux based uh, uh, services like ntpd. When you do set perform actions on those services, it will make entry into the messages, which will help you to troubleshoot what's going on <coughs> on your OS. So uh, similar to that, we are actually running tail minus f command. Let me kill this. On a file called opt genlogs logs access dot log. So what is that file? That is nothing but uh, uh, a simulator uh, means that is the target for a simulator which is provided by uh, Cloudera VM. So the commands which I am running now will only be available in Cloudera. It will not be available uh, Cloudera Quick Start VM uh, which will simulate uh, like updating web logs uh, in a company. So let's first see what is there in this. Copy. View paste and hit enter. You can see that um, it is uh, simulating certain transactions uh, that uh, um, the same way uh, it happens in a, a true application. So for example, if you try to buy certain things on uh, uh, e-commerce platform on uh, 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 using your browser, the request has to go through something called web server, application server before it actually persists in database. And uh, in some cases, to understand what is going on, we log uh, some important information in the uh, uh, web, uh, web server logs or application server logs. And by integrating uh, with uh, 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 certain applications, we can run some analytics out of it. In this case, uh, uh, our Cloudera Quick Start VM actually provide a simulator for it. Uh, the way uh, the real uh, world uh, uh, e-commerce platform runs and uh, uh, what you need to do to update this is you need to run a command called start underscore logs. So again that start underscore logs is nothing but a Linux script provided by Cloudera uh, team. So it works only on Cloudera. And you can run that uh, command like this, start underscore logs, and if you want to stop, you can stop it. So before uh, running it, let me copy it, come out, and then I'm running the command which we are actually issuing as source for our uh, agent, flume agent, okay. I'm, I have started it. And uh, now you can see that uh, there is the IP address 22.97.75.31 as the last entry. Now I am running start logs and immediately you can see that it is getting refreshed. So it is actually creating entries by running in the background. And if you want to kill, you can just say stop logs and hit enter and immediately it stopped. Okay. 
so now the purpose uh, of our uh, uh, out of the box examples is to read this data uh, the uh, in real time and write into solar but that is not relevant for our certification our for our certification we we have to write it into hdfs okay so in that context if you see the flume.conf the channel they are using file and uh, the the parameters are similar uh, to memory uh, even in file it has capacity and transaction capacity which will be persisted uh, on a file or uh, it might be stored in memory until uh, uh, those thresholds are reached and uh, once those thresholds are reached uh, the data will be dumped into hdfs okay and uh, sync instead of solo sync we will be using hdfs and uh, the script will look like this i'm going to my home directory i have flume here i have conf here so here is the configuration file the names are same r1 k1 c1 r1 for sources k1 for sync and c1 for channel and our source type is exec and this is the command which we are running and our channel is c1 and the channel type is file capacity is 20000 and transaction capacity is 1000 if you want to understand what is this capacity and transaction capacity you can go to flume documentation here and uh, scroll down flume user guide go to flume sources and in this case we are trying to run exec which stands for executing the Linux command exec source so this is the exec source okay uh, sorry we we are looking at channel parameters so things and first sources uh, in the documentation the order is first sources then things then the channels and our channel is file channel here it has a transaction capacity uh, which stands for the maximum size of transactions supported by the channel so uh, overall those many transactions can be there in a channel before it uh, flushes out into the uh, 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 into the sink and then other parameter which we are using is capacity itself so capacity is maximum capacity of the channel so this is the maximum size of transaction supported by channel and this is maximum capacity of the channel uh, so within a transaction it can hold those many but overall it can have uh, uh, 1 million uh, uh, events in the channel so that being said uh, here we, we are overriding those parameters our cha uh, channel capacity is 20,000 and each transaction can hold up to 1,000 transactions uh, uh, um, and uh, sorry each transaction can uh, hold up to 1,000 events but channel can up, uh, hold up to 20,000 events in the file before it flushes out into the sync and our HDFS sync is almost the same uh, only uh, from the previous run only difference is this use local timestamp equal to true uh, if you use this parameter you can actually use the patterns like this uh, to actually concatenate uh, 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 more appropriate uh, information such as year month date um, ip address all those things uh, to your file system use local timestamp will facilitate you to append the date uh, attributes uh, without using that also uh, without using that you can actually append uh, other relevant information such as IP addresses but if you want to use date you have to use uh, uh, this parameter use local timestamp equal to true that being said now um, uh, uh, now we can save it come out and then run the flume ng command same as uh, we have ran before and hit enter it will start the flume agent and in parallel you can also start logs 
you can run the start logs command to uh, so that it actually uh, generate the uh, transactions in the log file okay and then you can actually do hadoop fs minus ls user cloud error slow under which we are trying to uh, save uh, the files in hdfs so you can see that it has generated uh, file with uh, uh, sorry directory with uh, uh, date uh, in it so the directory name it itself is date so we can actually streamline our files like this to pu by pushing the um, uh, files into appropriate uh, date based directories if you are getting data from multiple sources you can create a directory using ip address also by using the patterns to understand the patterns in detail you can go to the documentation here you can go to hdfs sync and these are different uh, 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 information you can use by using the uh, appropriate um, uh, aliases for uh, 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 for the relevant information <coughs> okay percentage y is for uh, two the two digit tier percentage capital y is four digit tier we are using percentage y minus percentage m for month and then percentage d for day of month which is generating uh, uh, a directory um, uh, while data is being flushed into the hdfs and hit enter you will see different files in there uh, you can see that uh, the uh, yeah, the first file is of uh, size uh, 19 kb approximately and then it rolled into a different file that's because of the parameters we are using in this example dot com file okay here roll interval is 120 and roll count is 100 uh, when when it reaches one of these thresholds it will actually generate a new file as we have seen here so like that you can configure flume agent to integrate data into hdfs being said that i will wrap up um, uh, flume for the certification purpose in future slowly and steadily i will add more and more content on uh, and prepare uh, a series of videos as a playlist on flume itself uh, but for certification purpose i think uh, whatever information i have covered is more than enough even if they go out of the syllabus you can obviously get into the um, material which they provide at the time of certification and uh, uh, try to um, uh, get the task done so as long as you are confident enough to interpret certain things in the documentation i don't think it will be a challenge uh, to uh, to finish the task and i'm assuming that um, it will uh, they will actually give you uh, the code snippet uh, which will uh, be missing about how to integrate data into hdfs so most likely if you focus on uh, hdfs as sync you should be able to uh, finish the flume task but it's my assumption i haven't given the certification uh, so it can be uh, false as well so be aware of that that being said i hope you're enjoying the content on my channel if you like this video please click on the like button if you want to provide the feedback please use the comment section of the video if you want to uh, ask any technical question go to the stack overflow and ask uh, question with appropriate tags and if you want to discuss further on certification please join my linkedin group called hadoop certifications it was team minus hadoop certifications and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do so you will get to see a lot more content like this over time thank you bye